हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू द पार्ट टू ऑफ द लाइपोप्रोटीन मेटाबॉलिज्म लेक्चर वी आर कवरिंग कॉम्पिटेंसी बी आई फोर पॉइंट फोर और राइट इन दिस कॉम्पिटेंसी इट टेल्स अस अबाउट व्हाट आर द एसेंशियल एरियाज यू नीड टू नो अबाउट लाइपोप्रोटीन मेटाबॉलिज्म सो दिस कॉम्पिटेंसी सेज डिस्क्राइब द स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शन ऑफ लाइपोप्रोटीन दे फंक्शन इंटर रिलेशन and relation with atherosclerosis so in the last class we covered about the first few chylomicrons that are rich in tg that is the first few lipoproteins there is a chylomicron lipoproteins which includes chylomicron vldl or very low density lipoprotein idl that is intermediate density lipoprotein as well as ldl that is low density lipoprotein we kept hdl for today's class we will be covering hdl today we will be covering how it is helping in reverse cholesterol transport how it prevents heart disease we will be also covering lipotropic factors fatty liver the effect of diet everything in today's class so if you have not watched the part 1 you can find the link in the description or somewhere in the i button it's a good time to pause this video go back there clear your concepts come back here and then let us resume with the this video right so right off the bat i'll just go through a revision section of previous class that is these are the apoproteins and these are the lipoprotein particles with whom they are associated and these are the essential functions that they are carrying out mind it chylomicron for mcq purpose specially if chylomicron contains apo b48 b100 containing lipoproteins are vldl idl and ldl they also act as ligand to bind to ldl receptors in the uh, liver right lipoprotein that contains apoprotein c2 are chylomicron vldl idl hdl c3 are containing same right the action is c2 activates lipoprotein lipase and c3 inhibits lipoprotein lipase so in a way both of them can actually activate and inhibit lipoprotein lipase depending on the state of metabolism whether we are in fasting state or we are in fed state right next comes apo e uh, what type of lipoprotein contains apo e chylomicron remnant vldl idl and hdl ldl does not contain apoprotein e it binds as a ligand it i mean ldl receptor protein lrp help identifies apo e as ligand and they can then accept and lastly apo a1 it is absent in all the i mean major b100 containing lipoprotein c vldl idl and ldl is excluded from this list so hdl and chylomicron they contain apo a1 what do they do they activate lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase that is lcat or lcat all right so with this knowledge you can actually pause the video you can take a screenshot but please remember you need to remember the whole thing for mcq as well as for viva purposes right so we directly move on to the metabolic fate of hdl so what is it doing see in case of hdl it is actually a bit complex why why say complex because uh while discussing vldl idl ldl and even chylomicron i went through a step wise segmental uh, i revealed the whole diagram in a step wise manner so it was easy for you to understand but looking at this it might seem overwhelming but please uh, bear with me it's actually very easy to understand you just need to know what are the mechanism what are the sources of high density lipoprotein number 1 uh, hdl is produced from both liver and intestine the intestinal variant the see from small intestine when it is formed newly okay when it is absolutely new or nascent the shape is discoid it looks like a disc okay disc a three dimensional disc okay like hajmola you know what do i mean so it contains apo a1 uh, and lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase is there and its core contains phospholipase and cholesterol all right it is embedded the discoid layer if we look into this it's actually a phospholipid bilayer so it is the magnified view this is the phospholipid bilayer the whole bilayer is folded onto itself right now where are the component parts coming from while discussing chylomicron idl ldl vldl we saw 
when it was found from liver or intestine hdl was donating some apoprotein to them now who donates the components to hdl let us find out the core material that is phospholipid and cholesterol is actually coming from extra hepatic tissue okay also it can come from other form of hdl which is known as pre beta hdl this one you see so what is pre beta hdl pre beta hdl is something which is a stage bef even before the discoidal hdl is formed it co only contains ap a1 apo a1 right see this one is pre beta hdl so pre beta hdl is a immature hdl and it generally gets converted to discoidal hdl upon addition of lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase okay so i hope this part is clear next where from this cholesterol part is coming to the pre beta hdl who is the donor of cholesterol right cholesterol again may come from multiple sources one direct source is liver because cholesterol synthesis takes place here you can see there is one arrow which says synthesis so the whole thing is actually formed in the liver and it can be uh, dispersed into the circulation or the alternate pathway being the cholesterol is actually donated or taken up from the extra hepatic peripheral tissue what are the extra hepatic peripheral tissue uh, i mean blood vessels mainly anywhere where cholesterol gets deposited by ldl hdl does the opposite picks up cholesterol from them and it gets deposited in the liver right so where are the cholesterol coming from the cholesterol is coming from extra hepatic tissue right now cholesterol can get out of the extra hepatic tissue via three receptors number one is abc a1 receptor what abc a1 receptor is doing abc a1 is atp binding cassette protein receptor a1 okay abc atp binding cassette protein it requires atp so when cholesterol is coming out via atp binding cassette protein abc a1 it can donate its cholesterol to this pre beta hdl right or it can donate its cholesterol directly to apo a1 so apo a1 upon addition of phospholipid and cholesterol from the extra hepatic tissue with the help of abc a1 is being converted to pre beta hdl you get my point see what is the difference between this a1 and pre beta hdl it contains a lipoprotein lipid component right because it is a apoprotein when it's converted to the lipid it is becoming lipoprotein so protein and lipid so lipid component is coming from extra hepatic tissue so this is one pathway where apo a1 is being converted to the pre beta hdl and then it forms discoidal hdl right otherwise apo a1 can be directly excreted okay we are not going into that because that part is a one way mechanism and this is not concerned with the cyclic motion of hdl next cholesterol can also get out from the tissue with the help of two other receptor that is scavenger receptor b1 or srb1 or atp binding cassette protein receptor g1 or abc g1 they donate their phospholipid and cholesterol to a form of hdl that is known as hdl3 where from this hdl3 is coming we'll see this hdl3 on receiving the components from the extra hepatic tissue is getting converted to hdl2 right so often this discoidal hdl is known as hdl1 and the other forms are known as hdl2 and hdl3 now once hdl3 is converted to hdl2 what is hdl3 it's an apo lipoprotein that contains apo c apo a1 lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase cholesterol ester and phospholipid okay and major part of this lipid and cholesterol and cholesterol ester is coming from the extra hepatic tissue okay 
also this discoidal hdl is actually donating the lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase to hdl3 okay see all these things happen nearby just because for the sake of this diagram i have to give a big arrow but in reality this hdl3 is very near and in close proximity to this discoidal hdl okay i hope you get my point so hdl3 upon receiving donation from extra hepatic tissue is being converted to hdl2 and this hdl2 okay is actually identified it, it has got multiple fates one fate is it goes inside the liver with the help of sr b1 okay which identifies apo a as a ligand upon going inside it gets ruptured and the cholesterol cholesterol ester phospholipid all are deposited in the liver and this cholesterol is used up in synthesis of bile salt and bile acid okay this is one major pathway this is actually the reverse cholesterol transport pathway this one the cholesterol is coming and is getting deposited in the liver but not the entire hdl2 goes into the liver so what happens once it reaches the surface of the liver the it comes in contact with multiple lipolytic enzyme what are those lipolytic enzymes number 1 hepatic lipase that is present in the hepatocytes and number 2 endothelial lipase that is present in the uh, veins portal vein okay the blood vessels so those hepatic lipase and endothelial lipase what do they do they help in conversion of hdl2 to hdl3 right the difference between hdl2 and hdl3 is the absence of lcat right also some apo a1 can also be donated or it can simply lose hdl2 actually loses some form some amount of a1 while being converted to hdl3 so you see this hdl2 to hdl3 is actually a cycle it it gets converted from one to another with the help of donation of cholesterol from extra hepatic tissue hdl3 is converted to hdl2 and with the help of various type of lipases hdl2 is converted to hdl3 so this completes the entire cycle of high density lipoprotein it might be a bit overwhelming and difficult to understand right now but uh, trust me if the reverse cholesterol transport comes as a long question you need to give this diagram and mention all the important points well for you i have got things done easy because i have got a three dimensional uh, i mean 3d video where animated video rather where you can actually uh, visualize all these things in a graphical manner well before going to the video we need to understand one extra thing that is the role of cetp or cholesterol ester transport protein what does it do CETP this question will be asked in viva and mcq okay very important what does CETP do CETP actually interconnects the whole process of VLDL to LDL metabolism as well as HDL metabolism we discussed this whole process in last class how VLDL is converted it is getting smaller in size and it is becoming denser right so VL, among the these three VLDL is the largest in size it loses some free fatty acid with the help of lipoprotein lipase got converted to ideal the extra and it gets inter i mean uh, i don't say the term phagocytos it gets internalized in the liver also in the next step ideal also loses some free fatty acid gets converted to ldl again the same mechanism lipoprotein lipase and internalization in the liver now cholesterol ester and triglyceride are actually exchanged from hdl among these various b100 containing apoprotein these are all b100 contain lipoprotein all the three contains apo b100 so what does cetp do cetp helps in extraction of cholesterol ester from hdl to these three vldl ideal and ldl and in turn it extracts the triglyceride from them and donates them to hdl all right so this is the one common mechanism which is true for all of them all right now let's start with the video this animation provides an overview of how high density lipoprotein may protect against cardiovascular disease through the mechanism of reverse cholesterol transport 
This animated figure is a supplement to the JAMA article High Density Lipoprotein as a Therapeutic Target by Inder M. Singh and co-authors. In arterial walls, excess cholesterol stored in macrophages contributes to atherogenesis. Reverse cholesterol transport reduces cholesterol in macrophages by transferring it from macrophage stores to the liver where it is excreted into bile. In the first step of reverse cholesterol transport, cholesterol ester hydrolase, CEH, releases free cholesterol from cholesterol ester stores in vessel wall macrophages. Adenosine triphosphate binding cassette transporter A1 ABCA1 facilitates the efflux of cellular cholesterol to lipid-poor apolipoprotein A1 to form nascent pre-beta HDL. Lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, LCAT, esterifies free cholesterol in nascent pre-beta HDL to cholesterol ester, converting nascent beta HDL to mature alpha HDL. Interconversion of mature alpha HDL subspecies, HDL3 and HDL2, can occur in the arterial wall and in plasma. These interconversions are mediated by hepatic lipase, HL, endothelial lipase, EL, and LCAT. Mature alpha HDL particles, such as HDL3 and HDL2, can continue to accept free cholesterol through an efflux mechanism mediated by the adenosine triphosphate binding cassette transporter G1, ABCG1, enriching its overall cholesterol content. Cholesterol ester-rich HDL can return cholesterol to the liver by either a direct or indirect pathway. In the direct pathway of hepatic cholesterol uptake, cholesterol ester-rich HDL binds to scavenger receptor type B1, SRB1, that recognizes ApoA1 as a ligand. Cholesterol ester is then taken up into hepatocytes. In the indirect pathway of hepatic cholesterol uptake, mature cholesterol ester-rich HDL particles interact with triglyceride-rich ApoB particles, such as LDL and VLDL, via cholesterol ester transfer protein, CETP. CETP facilitates the exchange of cholesterol ester in HDL for triglycerides in low-density lipoprotein, LDL, and very low-density lipoprotein, VLDL. This produces triglyceride-rich HDL and cholesterol ester-rich LDL, or VLDL. Cholesterol ester is then taken up via LDL receptors on hepatocytes that recognize ApoB as a ligand. In both the direct and indirect pathway of hepatic cholesterol uptake, cholesterol ester within hepatocytes is catabolized and subsequently excreted into bile. So I hope that video cleared your concept regarding the whole uh I mean dynamics of HDL metabolism. Now we go on to some theoretical aspect that is hyperlipidemia. What you should know uh, about this, why we are actually studying the whole hyperprotein metabolism. Now see hyperlipidemia because it's a major cardiovascular risk factor. If you don't control hyperlipidemia in yourself and your patient, invariably they will end up in cardiovascular accident. So we need to know about how to prevent it, how to treat it, right? So number one, what are the predictors of carbohydrate, I mean cardiovascular diseases? So the level of low density lipoprotein, total cholesterol, the ratio of total cholesterol to HDL as well as the 1 by HDL that is uh, if HDL is more cardiovascular risk factor will be less. So that is why HDL is known as good cholesterol 
why good cholesterol because it is helping in clearing the cholesterol from periphery whereas ldl is bad cholesterol because it deposits cholesterol in the peripheral tissue the blood vessels we will be seeing what are the problems will happen if excess cholesterol is deposited right so what we need to do uh, reduce the target is to reduce ldl with the help of diet or medicine and that will turn in prevent cardiovascular diseases and it will save a lot of life time and money spent for healthcare uh, services right so the drugs that will be studying in detail in pharmacology like the next professional but you should know now that statins fibrate niacin bile acid binding resins these are the drug of choice for treating hyperlipidemia right atorvastatin simvastatin lovastatin there are phenofibrid there are multiple drugs which are prescribed very commonly to heart patient as well as patients who are obese right next this is a picture from the robbins textbook of pathology which will be your bread and butter again very soon in the next sem this basically actually shows what most of you already know what is happening white blood cell first of all they migrate through the endothelial wall to fight infection that is known right so what happens if cholesterol gets deposited in the lumen it actually uh, creates something uh, which alters the free flow of the blood right the surface becomes uneven with time the cholesterol molecules all the ldl cholesterol molecule they oxidize and they form foam cells with the help of macrophages and this together with the fact that the i mean turbulent blood flow also invites fibrin deposition right on the this foam cell leads to formation of something known as fibrinous cap so all this pathology goes on and on and on in a silent manner till our blood vessel is so narrowed that it is unable to provide blood to the end organ or the target organ in our body there are multiple ways of providing blood to a target organ right something known as collaterals that is if one supplying artery fails other surrounding arteries are capable enough to do the job but if there is any single artery to the target organ that is known as end arteries or that are known as end arteries if that end arteries are blocked then that organ which is singly dependent on supply of that artery that is you have only one source of water at your home right this imagine this uh, situation there are multiple taps at your home so if one tap is blocked you can get water from the uh, basin sink or in the bathroom and you can somehow manage right but if you your home has only got one tap source if that one tap source is blocked then it will be problematic right likewise if the single source of blood supply that is oxygen to the artery or end organ is blocked then it undergoes something known as hypoxia and eventually the cell dies which is known as infarction okay it, it becomes necrosed and this is known as a phenomena where uh, i mean in case of heart it leads to a phenomena known as acute myocardial infarction if this thing happens in brain it is known as stroke or cva right so cardiovascular accident or cerebrovascular accident right cardiovascular accident means something which is happening in the body and cerebrovascular accident is something that is happening in the brain so this in layman's language this is stroke and this is heart attack also this phenomena is uh, culprit uh, in producing a uh, condition known as barger's disease i know what is happening with my pen b u r uh, it's lagging anyway barger's disease b u r g e r okay barger's disease it happens in the lower limb and over there also arteries are critically narrowed and what happens the there is intense pain that is known as claudication intermittent claudication you will hear these terms in surgery when you go to the third year or final year so intermittent claudication happens and this 
along with another lifestyle modification or lifestyle bad habit that is smoking contributes to the whole thing so this is the phenomenon of atherosclerosis which targets all the vital organs like bra, uh, heart and brain and also other peripheral tissues now you already saw the video now let us look at the effect of exercise why do we often suggest exercise to patients who are obese not only obese we also suggest low grade exercise to all everybody in order to maintain a healthy lifestyle why because it increases the L level of lipoprotein lipase activity in muscle it reduces triglyceride from the lipoprotein lipase particle it helps in reduction of weight it increases high density lipoprotein so these are the biochemical reasons why exercise provides the huge beneficial role in maintaining our healthy lifestyle what are the mechanisms the mechanism there are multiple immunogenic mechanisms which are have been explored but it's beyond the scope of this class to explain you especially when you are in the first year of <laughs> mbbs right so next we move on to a topic of short note which is fatty liver or steatosis so what is the definition it is the accumulation of excess amount of lipid which is more than 4% of the total weight of the liver so if the 4% is a critical fat if it crosses that amount the what happens the liver tissue are actually replaced by fibrous tissue and ultimately it leads to cirrhosis of liver so that is bad some amount of fat is present in all adult liver so if you just perform i mean just get an ultrasonography of your abdomen done right now if you have crossed 18 years even if you have crossed 10 years for example of course if you are watching this video you have above 18 right some amount of fat will always be present in the liver it is not dependent upon whether the person is consuming alcohol or not of course alcohol consumption increases the amount of fat but there is a term that is known as NASH that is NASH also known as non-alcoholic steatohepatitis so fatty liver is very common so what are the causes number one overfeeding of fats if you eat too much liver will uh, I mean collect too much right next overfeeding of carbohydrates this is also very important carbohydrate what happen it leads to formation of acetyl CoA acetyl CoA is the precursor of formation of de novo synthesis of fat right so more carbohydrate more fat so a person who only only consumes rice and potato every day thrice a day will get obese in no time even if he or she is avoiding butter ghee all those things right next over metabolization of fatty acid from depot to liver this is a condition of the body and it can happen uh, on sedentary lifestyle if you are not performing exercise also decreased oxidation of fatty acid and it can happen due to deficiency of pantothenic acid there's a nutritional deficiency deficiency of carnitine hence now l-carnitine is a very important dietary supplement that is used to prevent this fatty liver and also a condition where there is excess nadh in the body compared to nad why it happens due to alcoholism alcohol dehydrogenase is an enzyme that helps in conversion of alcohol to acetaldehyde and in process the amount of nadh to nad ratio increase in the body and that also leads to fatty liver right and lastly decreased mobilization of fat from liver to blood it's also again related to exercise right so you can avoid uh, multiple uh, factors just by doing a low grade exercise avoiding consumption of alcohol and maintaining a prop maintaining a proper diet which is low in carbohydrate and more in vegetables and proteins right so next we move on to lipotropic factors so what are lipotropic factors these are factors which facilitate transport of triacylglycerol from the liver to be utilized by the tissues so what are these factors so what are they doing it helps in uh, transport the triacylglycerol that is deposited in the liver they help in mobilization of these tg so that it can be utilized by other tissues so these tg can be used as a substance for phospholipid biosynthesis it can be used for protein biosynthesis how these tg are converted to other substance 
which will then help in protein biosynthesis. So, what are the substances that are needed for phospholipid biosynthesis? Number one, essential fatty acid, inositol, choline, and specifically substances that are needed for choline biosynthesis such as methionine, uh, glycine, betaine, folic acid, vitamin B12, all these are important, right? You may be asked all of these or either one of them in MCQ. Right, so what are the substances that are needed for phospholipid biosynthesis? You don't need to know in detail the full pathway of phospholipid biosynthesis, but only name of these substances and the cofactors. If vitamin B12 and folic acid are used for one carbon reaction, also this all these are the participants of one carbon reaction, which is essential for synthesis of choline, and choline in turn is essential for synthesis of phospholipid, right? Phosphatidylcholine, you have heard lecithin, right? And sort of substance that are needed for protein biosynthesis, proteins of high biological value, for example, again, methionine and other non-essential amino acid that is serine. So, these are the various lipotropic factors, right? So, these, if we consume these in excess, this will help in phospholipid biosynthesis, number one, and this will also help in uh, protein biosynthesis and thus they will help in removal of triacylglycerol to be utilized by other tissues. So, remember these are the lipotropic factors. What are they? What is their job? Their job is preventing fatty liver, right? So, see some amino acid can prevent fatty liver. So, maintaining proper diet is all what you need. Next, what are the anti-lipotropic factors? What are they doing? They are the substances which inhibit mobilization of fats from the liver. So, if you consume them in diet, you will have more chance of getting fatty liver rather than preventing fatty liver. So, what are the causes? Substance which inhibit phospholipid biosynthesis, just the opposite of them. And again, substances which inhibit protein biosynthesis. So, just simply the opposite, the conceptual opposite of what we studied in the earlier classes. So, what are the example of anti-lipotropic factors? Substances which inhibit phospholipid biosynthesis are overfeeding of cholesterol, niacin and biotin. If a diet is such that it contains increased amount of cholesterol, niacin and biotin, it will prevent mobilization of fat from liver and it will increase the incidence of fatty liver. And similarly, substances which inhibit protein biosynthesis are CCL that is carbon tetrachloride, chloroform, phosphorus, arsenic and ethanol. These are environmental poisons, right? And they are responsible indirectly uh, by inhibiting the uh, pathways that are actually helping in mobilization of fat from the liver. So, they are inhibiting the lipotropic pathways and thus they are acting as anti-lipotropic factors and they are increasing the incidence of fatty liver. Next, what is the effect of diet? You see, uh, generally in vegetarian diet, cholesterol intake is less because mainly even though plant source are there for cholesterol, that is known as phytosterol, the majority are animal source. The animal food contains much more cholesterol. So, vegan diet, cholesterol intake is reduced. We, if we induce, I mean take a diet which is low in carbohydrate, also the amount of VLDL and triglyceride is reduced. Reduced fat uh, also reduces chylomicron and triglyceride. Al unsaturated fat in diet, this is very important. It also helps in reduction of plasma cholesterol. Therefore, multiple uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFA are actually very much cardioprotective in nature. So, we now dietitians are even everyone is promoting consumption of PUFA, a lot of PUFA in diet that is arachidonic acid, you know the icosapentaenoic acid DHA. There are multiple good agents that are polyunsaturated fatty acid and they help in reduction of plasma cholesterol and last but not the least dietary fiber they inhibit cholesterol absorption i have got a dedicated class in dietary fiber that is under nutrition chapter biochemistry competency 8.1 you can search them in my channel and you can get a full information of how dietary fibers are beneficial what are the roles that they are playing because this is something new in the competency questions will be asked from dietary fibers right next 
what are the postprandial changes in plasma lipoprotein metabolism right so number one excess fat storage via lipoprotein lipase right postprandial changes mean what are the changes that are happening when we eat food immediately after eating food next exchange of cholesterol for vldl tg in hdl by ctp we already read what is the role of ctp so what happened increase exchange of cholesterol for vldl and tg in hdl means tg is going to hdl and cholesterol is going to vldl next what's happening increase lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase activity what it does it helps in esterification of the free cholesterol in hdl so cholesterol is converted to cholesterol ester and are these good or bad these are actually very good these postprandial changes are beneficial in maintaining the whole body homeostasis of glycerides and cholesterol so actually if and all of this thing can happen if there is high amount of hdl in blood okay if hdl is low this thing will not happen tgl ex, i mean tg exchange from vldl will not happen increased esterification will not happen and this will lead to deposition of the formed cholesterol in the peripheral tissue so that's all folks i thank you all for your patient hearing i hope the two classes have now solidified your concepts in lipoprotein metabolism i request you to go back and watch other chapters of lipid metabolism which i have covered in my previous lectures so that the entire lipid metabolism can now be uh, watched in my channel one after another please feel free to ask any question in the comment section also please feel free to join the facebook group which i have created in which you students can join and i am always there to answer your queries you can post anything students all over india are there in the group and i'll see you soon with another video till then take care